Alex, welcome to We're Going There. And I think we've already had a podcast in and of itself because <laughs> I got to encounter you and your husband and your amazing uh, ability to just love your husband so well to run up and grab microphones. So <laughs> we are professional up in here. Alex, welcome to the podcast. Honestly, thank you for having me. Uh, it's a joy. I've been looking forward to this, I'll be honest, because I love you so much. So, Well, I'm, I'm excited. excited. I'm excited. Um, as I mentioned to the listeners before, I feel like every time I am around you, you awaken something new inside of me. And that is what I'm believing is going to happen in the podcast. For people who don't know you, they will love you by the end of this show. And um, little caveat, I remember going to the Belonging Co. in Nashville, Tennessee for the first time. This was years ago. And I remember during worship saying, I, I wish that there was a church near me like this. And little did I know that it was an itty bitty little seed that God kind of planted in my heart because fast forward years later, our churches are very different. I can't even pretend yeah. to be like y'all, but, um, but fast forward no, years but later, it's the spirit it's in the, the spirit. church. It's the spirit in the church. And I look at you and Henry and like, how you guys are leading. And let me just say it is inspiration. So thank you for your time today. You're welcome. Okay, Alex. Um, I think that there is no one else who I have heard who speaks about the presence of God, the tangible presence of God uh, in our lives in a way that you do. And so I talk to, um, and I'm sure you do too. I'm sure we're talking to people in our churches, to people in coffee shops, people in airplanes and conferences who are living, I think the phrase that just comes to mind is half-baked lives. And can you talk to us? I want to know, like, what's that thing that makes you come alive and how do you share that with other people? Yeah, it's funny. I, I, I have a friend that always says to me that I'm the eternal energizer bunny. She goes yes. like, how do you, you know, in spiritual things, she goes, you're all, I've never seen you have a flat day when it comes to God and his purpose and everything about you know, the church and your ministry life. And I said, honestly, it's one word. It's only one word and it's a person. And that person is Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that energizes and gives me a effervescent experience in my faith walk that I would not be who I am today without the power and the person of Holy Spirit. And I, I love what you said, because that's been my pet peeve, if you like, is that Christians who deny the power thereof that is available to them because of the cross. We love salvation, but there's a lot of Christians that are saved, but don't walk in the freedom and the power that has been afforded us by Jesus Christ. And if Jesus said, it's better that I go away so that the Holy Spirit can be with you, to be your comforter, your guide, your teacher. It's like he basically gave us himself in spirit form, yet the church has just taken the salvation part, but not allowed us to walk in the power. And if he said to his disciples, don't you dare go anywhere, don't you start your ministry until you've been clothed with power from on high, then what are we doing with out the Holy Spirit. We're just speaking good motivational sermons. We're just speaking good positive messages, but we don't have the power that actually transforms lives. And that's the thing that awakens, makes me alive and keeps me on fire. So what does this look like in the everyday? So we can talk about this big theological concept. Take me through like, what does that look like for Alex? And then we'll talk about like, let's, yeah. let's break it down after that. Yeah. I mean, my life, since I was filled, like I got saved at the age of 11 and I had been in church my whole life, you know, grew up in a Christian home, but it wasn't until I got saved that I actually, even though I was young, I had this encounter of the revelation of what sin separates us. I felt the chasm literally shrink. The minute that I gave my life to Jesus, I felt this weight come off me and there was a joy unspeakable that filled my heart that I couldn't stop smiling for days. The week later, I 
went to a little, I went to this little Italian Pentecostal independent church. You know, there's about 200 people in it. They preach their messages in Italian and it was not cool. It was not fancy. But this particular Sunday, he was talking about the Holy Spirit. And before the service had even finished, I found myself running up to the altar and just raising my hands going, I want whatever he's offering. And the pastor didn't even know what to do with me because I'm this 11 year old kid. I just got saved the week prior in another church, mind you. But I was so hungry because I knew there was more. And he was talking about this Holy Spirit that from that moment on, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, and for those of you who maybe aren't familiar with being filled with the Holy Spirit, because that salvation you receive, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, I began to speak in an unknown tongue that I couldn't make up at the age of 11. But it was like fire got lit in my spirit. And I became this... I don't even know how to explain it, but it was like everything just became color. Everything became alive. And I just became this Holy Spirit crazy person at school. And I just felt this boldness come on me that I had to tell everybody about Jesus. And my life hasn't really changed. So from the age of 11 on a daily basis, I've got to know the person of Holy Spirit, this fire that wasn't just a a freaky force. It was something that literally overwhelmed me. And it was this power that came out inside of me. I became this person that, oh my gosh, everybody needs this. Everybody needs to experience this. And so for my every day from the age of 11 to now is I engage with the person Holy Spirit like I would Father and Jesus. And what I mean by that is I talk to him like a person, but I worship with him. I talk to him. I pray with him. My speaking in a prayer language is the thing that ignites my faith. And so the way I approach each day is Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, make your presence known to me. Make my eyes open to see others the way you see them. And Holy Spirit, help me, guide me, give me the keys. And it's hard to to unpack in this short amount of time, but I've just purposed to know the person of Holy Spirit. And so I engage with him on a daily basis through worship, through the word, and through intimate relationship with him. And it's what keeps me buoyant and alive. And it just is throughout the day, I'll be in the car, Holy Spirit, what do I do here? Holy Spirit, what do I say here? Holy Spirit, what do I pray? I don't even know the words right now, but I'm going to begin to speak in my heavenly language. So this is literally an everyday, all day occurrence for me. I hope that no, it breaks does. it down. It totally does. Okay. So you said something and I want to kind of pause and go back on. You said something about um, you had said yes to Jesus when you were 11 years old. And the next weekend, you can't explain it. It's not a force. It's this, this like presence and and the, the phrase that I want to latch on to is you said, I want more. And in your yeah. encounter with that pastor in that Pentecostal church in Australia, it was Australia, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, it, th- that you said, I want more. I had that very same encounter, but I wish wow. it was at 11. It was at 23. In my whole wow. life, I'd been raised in church. I yep. was a good Christian girl. I didn't party. I didn't go out. Like I wasn't crazy. Um, and I loved God and I yeah. knew God and I believed in God, but the believing God for that power from on high that he promised to us was something different. Yeah. And I saw a 65 year old woman with white hair and Caucasian woman talking about the power of the Holy spirit in such a way that yeah. was so natural. I was like, what yeah. she has, I want that. And like, yes. um, I actually didn't speak in an, an unknown language when we prayed, but there was, I, I can't explain it, but a shift in my heart. Yeah. I, again, I feel so limited with language because you're putting language on this yeah. thing or this unintelligible yeah. thing. Yeah. But I, my life forever changed, Alex. Yeah. My ambitions changed, my drive changed, my goals changed. Yeah. And so we spoke a little bit about like what that looks like for you on an everyday, but there is going to be someone out there yeah. who's listening saying, this is weird. Why do I need that? Jesus is my all sufficient. 
What do you say to him? What do you say to her? Well, I say, if Jesus needed it, so do we. And I'm going to talk about... Oh, no, you need to say that again. (laughs) Say it again, flip it, and reverse it. If Jesus needed it, we need it. And I want to tell you the difference of why Jesus moved in power. Because I think we just look at Jesus, holy one, anointed one, bringer of the Beatitudes, you know, healing and going about doing miracles. But I want you to backtrack and see that Jesus actually received the power of Holy Spirit at his baptism. Up until then, he's not really engaging in the power of his ministry, right? So he's growing in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. And it says that at 30, he comes to get baptized. And it's at that point that his identity is sealed by the father. Heaven opens because of his obedience and heaven opens. And it says the Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove and descended upon him and remained on him. It was that point then it said the spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. And that is when he overcame the enemy with the power of the Holy Spirit on him. It talks many times about the Holy Spirit coming on and remaining on. He did it in the Old Testament, but this was the difference. Jesus was entering his priestly ministry and it was that baptism that actually uh, was the transition for him to go into his ministry that outworked for others. And so the Holy Spirit comes on him, right? And from then on, he's only doing the work of the Spirit and the Father. So the Holy Spirit is on him to do the work through him. So he goes into the wilderness, he gets uh, tempted by the enemy, he overcomes the enemy by the third denial of not engaging in that. He then walks out full of power, full of authority with the Spirit of God. That's then when he operates signs, wonders, and miracles and is able to overcome the enemy at the cross. And that's why he says says to his disciples, don't you dare go anywhere until that same Holy Spirit that descended upon me in the form of a dove, now it's going to descend on you like fire. John the Baptist baptized you with water, but I'm the one that now baptizes with fire. And this is the fire that changed the world. It wasn't the good news of the gospel. It, ju- it wasn't just the good news. I shouldn't say that. It wasn't just the good news of the gospel. It wasn't just good works. It was the power that operated through his disciples. They saw the dead raised. They saw healings. They saw deliverances. They preached the gospel with power. They operated in signs and wonders to the point that they they went to martyrdom because of this. And I don't think as Christians that it's enough to have just the word because there are a lot of eloquent people out there. There are a lot of motivational Christians out there, but I want to be able to have power that sees a drug addict delivered from their addiction in one prayer. I want to see blind eyes open. I want to see healings. I want to see the dead raised. I want to see healings under my hand. I want to see that when I preach, it actually has the power where the Holy Spirit rests on that word and actually does the work to bring transformation and change. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm looking at the big church right now and I'm seeing a lot of people that are are saved, but that don't walk in full freedom. And I actually believe that comes with the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'm saying yes and amen. And the thing that I love is, and I know that people are listening and they might feel turned off, but there's going to be many that are inquisitive and just want to know more. Yeah. I feel like you are wetting our appetite for the power of yeah. God. And I want to yeah. be careful because some of the, sometimes people hear like a uh, power and power of God and feel that there is a little bit of like self empowerment behind that. Yeah. But no. It is the opposite. And I think that you live this out so beautifully. So uh, Alex, I, I know I, I, we've had many conversations and yeah. I know the great work that's coming out of church, 
I want to kind of what is ask like what does this look like in practice and in praxis? So we're talking about being filled with the power of God, the Holy Spirit resting on us when we do what God's called us to do. So yeah, share with me a little bit. Like um, I just want to paint a picture that's so not just three D but four D, where people yeah. we don't just talk about. Holy Spirit is a concept, but it's something that is applicable in ours. So can you tell me a story, yeah. something from church or in ministry, whether in teens, 20s, 30s, wherever, um, about when you saw the power of God rest upon you to do a work in his name? Yeah, I, I want to take you through the when I was formidi- forming my, my ability to move in Holy Spirit, because this is the thing about Holy Spirit. He gives us the gifts of the Spirit, right? So there are gifts of the Holy Spirit. They're for the good of others, right? So there's, you know, the, the, the gift of word of knowledge, the gift of prophecy, the gift of speaking in tongues, the gift of faith, the gift of healing. Like there's, there's these gifts, right? And so we have the fruits of the spirit, then we have gifts of the spirit and we operate in these gifts. And a lot of people will be like, oh, but that's just for the pastor or that's just, no, this is the equipping of the saints. The role of the pastor, prophet, evangelist, teacher um, is to equip the body and to move in those gifts, where to equip the saints. So for me, as a pastor now of a church, I'm equipping the body so that they can operate in these gifts and use it in their every day. So when I was a young teenager, I was wanting to operate in the gifts of the spirit. And I remember I had had these beautiful encounters with the Holy Spirit. There was a pastor that always would say, the touch of God is for the task. It's for the use of others. Like I'm being encountered by God so that I can fulfill his purpose, right? A lot of people where they think it's weird is because so many Christians become self-absorbed and self-centered and they want the touch of God to be like um, a drug addict. Oh, let me get my fix so I can feel good about myself. But if you're not filling up and pouring out, then you just become a glutton of the spirit and you you, you become a bit kooky. But the touch of God is so that you can be used by God. So when I was a young kid, I would practice this and say, okay, God, I want you to use me. I want, I want to be able to share my faith with somebody and show them that you love them. So I was on my school bus one day and I remember seeing this girl highlighted. There was just something about this girl that I was drawn to. And I, I said, God, do you want me to share something about you to her? And he's like, mm-hmm. wait, how is this all happening? I was probably 15, 16. Okay, go. And so I'm in the, on the bus because we used to not catch school buses like the Americans do. We would have to catch the metro bus like in the city. And that, we all just took the bus that took us home. And so you're with all types of people. You are with drunks. You were with weird people. You are with lovely people, business people, corporate people, students, other schools. Like, so you're just on a public metro bus. And so this girl I'd never seen before in my life, she just had a school uniform on. I had a school uniform. We didn't go to the same school. And something was highlighted. And I felt God gave me a word of knowledge for her. And I was like, oh my gosh, my heart's racing. I'm freaking out. Like, is she going to think I'm weird? What do I do? But I just remember moving out in faith and saying, hey, this is going to seem so weird, but I feel like I've got this message um, from the Lord. And this is going to sound so weird. And you might not know God and you might think I'm a bit crazy, but I'm just going to start by saying this. Do you know this person and gave the full name? No. Like full name. And she went, how the heck do you know that I know that person? And I said, well, God knows. And I said, and God wants to say these things to you. That, and I started to list whatever it was, you know, that he said. And she starts, tears start running down her eyes. And I said, God showed me that because that's how intentional and detailed he is about you. He knows every thought. He knows every bit about your life. And he's saying, if you give me your life, I will treasure it and I will lead you because he's got a great destiny and purpose for you. Well, this girl is bawling her eyes out. I'm able to share Jesus with her. She's like, how did you do that? Another case scenario where a girl was having uh, night terrors and it was just, it was actually demonic, like that it was spiritual. And she was having a sleepover at my house. And I start speaking in my prayer language 
And she's like, oh my gosh, Alex, every time you speak in your prayer language, I feel absolute peace come over me. And every time you stop speaking in your prayer language, I get fear again. And I said, well, do you want Jesus in your heart? Because actually I have full peace because Jesus is in my heart. She's like, yes. Wait, I how like, old are you, Alex? Oh, I, again, I'm in, I'm in high school. You so are I don't an evangelist since uh, yeah. the womb. I love since, it. <laughs> literally. And this is what I'm telling you. When the Holy Spirit came on, there was a boldness because I'd encountered something supernatural. Mm. So I knew it wasn't me. It wasn't just, oh, I learned this in Bible study. I had encountered something. So now this is, can I just segue? Please. This is what it means to be witnesses. See, Acts 1, 8, Acts 1, 8 says, and the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and all the ends of the earth. In order to be a witness, you have to have seen it with your own eyes. You've had to experience, you were there. You can't go to a court of law and bring hearsay just because you learned it in a book or you heard it from your pastor. The only witness that's allowed on the stand is the person that was there present at the Ooh, crime. Yes. Right? So Jesus is saying, I need you to be witnesses to me, not hearsay talkers. So I had witnessed something with my own eyes, with my own life, and therefore now I'm able to bring it. And therefore I have authority in it because I've experienced it myself. So when I prayed for this girl, again, this happened. Again, another scenario where I've been at church and somebody has prayed for me. Now, I didn't make this up, but the power of God hit me where I fell. And maybe you've heard about this being slain in the spirit. I heard about, I heard about this, but until I encountered it, I didn't believe it was real. And what happened when we, when me, when I was prayed over, the only way I can explain it is if you've ever been, had an electric shock, you feel electricity go through your whole body and it's a power greater than yourself. So you can't withstand it. And it's the same with God. When you touch the source of where the power is, we are built as finite beings that his power is so much greater. So he's saying, let me touch you so that you can experience my power so that when you come up out of that, you've encountered something that's supernatural. Now go and take it to somebody. And so when I would pray for people, they would fall under the power of God. And so this has been, I mean, I can tell you story after story after story of words of knowledge, of the prophetic, of healing to strangers that don't even know God and they've been healed. When God said, go pray for that person, go tell them about my love. So this is why it's so exciting. If you're a Christian or if you're just a new Christian and you think Christianity is all about rules and regulations, then you don't know our God because our Christianity is actually an adventure of the supernatural realm. I'm talking a lot. So no, I, I, Alex, that's why I brought you on. That's why I brought you on. I just feel like um, I want my online friends to meet my real life friends and to learn from them. And I think that you are a well. So please don't edit yourself. Please don't stop talking. <laughs> I, I, I promise you, this is great. So, okay. So I'm going to back this up. Yeah. When you were on the bus and you were 11 years old, the first time yeah. I was 11 years old, right? No, not when I did that, That because I w wasn't allowed to catch the bus when I was 11. This was when oh, okay. I was in high school. You 11 high school. was when I got filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's right. High Forgive school. me. Yeah. But you're on the bus, yeah. you were in Australia, yeah. and you feel and sense yeah. that you yeah. have to go speak to that individual person. I yeah. mean, let's go basics, Alex. Yeah. What did, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to also shed, I'm going to talk about like how we could prophetically hear God. Um, yeah. But for you, what did that look like? Yeah, it was literally an impression. Like, so it's a thought. And this is where I think a lot of people overcomplicate God because he speaks in our thoughts. I mean, it's not mm. audible. I have never, in all my years of being a Christian, I've never heard the audible voice of God. I've sensed the voice of God. I've heard the voice of God in my heart. And when you are aligned with God in relationship with him, his thoughts become your thoughts because you're submitted that's and good. surrendered yeah. to him. So that's why you can hear him. And I'm in the word of God. So I can hear and learn to discern what his voice sounds like because I'm reading his voice 
in the word. And so those two are lining up. So then when I get this impression, what is it about that girl? But also backtrack, I'm asking God, um, show me, lead me. I'm prepared. I'm not just sitting there thinking about, you know, eating chocolate. I'm actually at home going, God, I want an opportunity to exercise my faith. I want to move in your spirit. So I'm hungering after that. So my thoughts are aligned with that. So when I see that girl, it's almost like she just gets highlighted to me. Like, why am I noticing her? And then I'm like, Lord, do you want to speak to her? And so then I think I feel my heart race. So I'm going, oh my gosh, I think this is it. I think this is it. So Lord, what do you want to say? She knows this person. Now I'm not thinking about that person. So I'm going, who is that person? So the name that you got, that you got, the name that you got, you didn't know who who that person was. Yeah. So I'm going, uh, 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 you know, what is that name? So that's where I'm going. It got, has to be God. I'm not just pulling out this thing because right. I'm going, I'm thinking your thoughts. So then I'm going, well, I'm going to start with that because then if it's wrong, I know I'm completely off and I'm just going to go, <laughs> Hey, where'd you get your shoes? You know, like <laughs> I'm just going to talk. So I'm always going to have a, ba- I'm not going to go up and be like, thus saith the Lord. <laughs> I'm going to be like, Hey, this may seem really random. And I'm going to start the conversation. And then she's like, hold on a minute. How did you know that? And I said, well, God revealed that to me. And I said, and I think God was, has a message for you. Now, I didn't know that she was actually seeking God in a way like, if you're real God, show yourself to me. See, we never know what the prayer on the other side is. But if we're willing to be obedient, you just never know what God's going to do. And so my heart is racing. I'm as scared as any human. It's not like I'm full of boldness, ba, ba, da, ba. I'm being timid and, I, but I'm testing the water and I'm stepping out. But when she was like, yes, I do know that person. And then I'm like, okay, I said, this is going to feel maybe weird. And if, if, if it doesn't resonate, just throw it out. But I'm just going to go out on a limb and say X, Y, Z. And she was, that's when she starts crying. And I know I've hit something Mm. and what it did is it built my faith for the next time I sensed something. And I have always, like there was a day that I was sitting on a plane and I didn't know this girl was self harming. And I felt God say, she's a self harmer. And I just started conversation. Now I didn't start with that. Like you don't go, Hey, the Lord has told me you're a self harmer. (laughs) You know, you don't start with that. You've got to learn to be sensitive, but I began to speak of the things What I began to do is tell my own testimony Mm -hmm. of self-hatred and self-loathing and how, you know, because she was like, what do you do? And I'm like, well, I preach the word of God, but, you know, this is later on in life. And, and then I, and then as we built this relationship and as I could tell, she was open and I said, I know that you probably have struggled with depression and maybe even as far as self-harming, would I be correct? Like, that's how I approached it. Well, she then starts crying, opens up her sleeve and shows me the cuts on her arms. And I said, do you, I said, I know somebody who can heal you for the trauma. I said, the self harms, just the symptom, but the trauma, there was a wound that happened to you. Do you know that I know Jesus and he can heal that wound? Well, we, I led her to Jesus. We prayed. I stayed in contact with her. That's the power of listening to the voice of Holy yes. Spirit and then being able to bring Jesus and healing to a person. Sometimes I've had the conversation with people and they've not been ready to give their lives to Jesus, but a seed has been sown. Absolutely. And this is why we're always on mission. Wherever we walk, wherever we go, whether you're in the grocery store, whether you're in the, I mean, I have stopped people and just gone, I know this may sound weird, but are you okay? And they're like, yes, I'm fine. All right, no problem. You know, I have just stepped out. Sometimes it's worked, sometimes it hasn't. But more than not, it's worked. And so this is where I'm on mission to bring Jesus to a generation. And the most beautiful thing is, is when they see that God sees them, it opens their heart and disarms them. And that's really what the Holy Spirit does. 
I love this. Okay. My hope and my heart in, in even just having a conversation about this is that somebody who has been sensing or feeling or knowing or hearing the voice of God, that they actually take that first step. So yeah. like you, Alex, um, I was 23. The first time that I actually heard a theological understanding that resonated in my heart about yeah. the nature, the triune nature of God, Father, yeah. Son, Holy Spirit, God, the Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, and it was probably like six to nine months later that I could pinpoint and identify feeling that God was asking me to speak out a word of knowledge, yeah. but it's that, it's, it's that ledge. Um, it's like, you're standing on a ledge. You yes. will never be able to step into the fullness of what God has called us. And when he says to be his hand and his feet, we don't get the privilege and the honor unless we have the courage to step out. So your 100%. teenage years of stepping out to that woman on the bus, my 20 something yeah. years, I'm hoping that if there is a 30, 40, 50, 60 year old listening to this podcast, it is not too late that we yeah. can be empowered through the power of God's spirit to be bold and be his hands and his feet. And the blessing of that, Alex, really quick, will you talk to me about the blessing of walking under the power of the Holy Spirit? So we talk about the beginning of the understanding of the Holy Spirit, um, the outworking of Holy Spirit. Yeah. But I want to talk about the blessing too. I just love the flow of the conversation. You're on a roll. There are so many blessings. There are so (laughs) many blessings. Imagine having like Jesus as a person who's beside you 24 seven in real time. That's what you've got when you have Holy Spirit with you. It's like having the person who knows everything, the wisest person, the most loving person, the most comforting person, the most honest person, the most, the best friend, the the most best friend you could ever, 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 ever have. That's who I have in Holy Spirit. So when I live with him, like in relationship, the blessings that come from that is that I have all the fruits of the spirit, peace, joy, love, goodness, faithfulness, kindness, long suffering, like patience, goodness, like faithfulness, all those gifts are a blessing to me. I live in a realm of peace. Like I have, I can't even explain. There are so many anxious Christians that it bothers me. It bothers me that as a son or daughter of God, that you can be full of anxiety. It bothers me that what Jesus purchased on the cross and died and rose again for that we don't live in the fullness of. So the blessings of Holy Spirit is that you get to live in a realm of peace, favor, uh, honor, boldness, fearlessness. Like there is no fear in my life. I don't live with a spirit of fear. I live with a fullness. And do I have bad days? Absolutely. Do I have traumatic circumstances come against me? Absolutely. Do I have everyday instances that try and take me out? 100%. But do they take me out? No. Am I under oppression? No. Do I live under fear? No. There's a blessing that comes with living with Holy Spirit that you learn to overcome every obstacle, every situation, every heartache. And you get to experience something that is so profound and it's what humanity is hungry for it's what even christians are longing for that half bakedness is because i believe they've not been awakened to the person of holy spirit i think the half bakedness is because they're living a set of rules and regulations because they know it's good morality like i need good morals in my life i need you know a, a, a framework for my life but I'm not living out of the overflow of a relationship that enables me to live free. And the blessing, honestly, the ultimate blessing of Holy Spirit is my true freedom. I don't say this lightly, Bianca, but, and I know that you can attest to this in me, but I live truly free. Mm -hmm. I see so many insecure people that preach the gospel. I see people who have got empires under them, but are still riddled with insecurity and honestly that's not true blessing true blessings to me is when i can sit in a room and if nobody likes me i'm still good with myself i don't care if you 
you don't like me. I don't care because if God is for me, who can be against me? These aren't just coined phrases. I do live in a place of absolute freedom that I don't live bound by the, the opinion of man. I don't live bound by having to strive to get somewhere to feel good about myself. And if anything, if I never did another thing for the rest of my life, living in this realm of peace and freedom is all the blessing that I need in my life. And so I think it's available to all of us, but you've got to get to know the person of Holy Spirit, not just the religious understanding of Holy Spirit. Alex, I want to thank you for always, always calling us to rise and um, for people who are listening and are hungry and they want that more that you encountered at the age of 11 that I encountered at the age of 23, will you do me a favor? Will you pray over us, myself yeah. included? Because I want a fresh overflow yeah. of the presence of God, Holy Spirit yeah. to be made manifest in my life. Will you pray for us as we kind of close out yeah, the podcast? Absolutely. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you that you gave us your Holy Spirit. You and Holy Spirit are one. So when we know you, we know him. But God, I pray that there are people right now listening, that there has been like a taste, like a hunger that has just developed right now, an appetite for more of you. God, you are so simple that you said, if parents like fathers in the natural on earth, even though they are evil, even though they're full of sin, even they will give good gifts to their kids. Like if we ask for bread, you won't give us a stone. They won't give their kids a stone. If you ask for fish, they won't give you, a, a, you know, they won't give you a scorpion. God, it says in your word in Luke 11 that I am your father. And if, I, if you ask for Holy Spirit, how much more will I give you Holy Spirit if you ask? That's all we need to do. Just the posture of being in the, in the posture of asking. And so God, I pray right now that every person that wants more, that wants to encounter you more, all they have to do is ask, Father, would you reveal your Holy Spirit to me in a fresh way? Father, will you empower me with your Holy Spirit in a new, fresh baptism of fire? Would you give me the Holy Spirit that you promise in your word time and time and, and time again? Father, I pray that everybody that is hungry and thirsty, that you would fill them to overflowing. God, you promise that if we ask, we'll receive. If we seek, we'll find. And if we knock, the door will be open to us. So God, I pray that the Holy Spirit today would be made so present that all we have to do is say, Holy Spirit, would you reveal yourself to me? And I promise you that you will encounter the Holy Spirit because he wants to reveal himself more to you than you even want it. So God, I pray today that you would empower your listeners, that you would empower these believers right now that are listening in and that you would come in a fresh, fresh outpouring over their lives so that they not, not only will be fresh, but they would be able to be used by you for others. So God, would you come? And would you pour out your spirit on all flesh, just like you promised in Joel 2.28 and in Acts? Would you pour out your spirit on your sons and daughters that we would prophesy, that we would see visions, that we would dream dreams, and that there would be a part of our faith that awakens like never before. So we ask and we know that you keep a good name and your good name says yes and amen. Amen. Alex, I love you. Thank you. 